Father. You're a righteous Father. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. Oh, worship the Father. Oh, let your anointing, let your presence fill this room, fill this house, fill this house, fill this house. As Pastor spoke last week.
we bless you. Oh God, we magnify you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We give him glory. Hey, hey, hey. Oh God, we love you. Oh God, we bless you. Oh, I dare you to lift your hands right where you are. And give the Father what he rightfully deserves. And that is our worship. Oh God, we love you. We magnify you, we adore you. Oh Father, we love you today. We honor you today. Have your way.
worship him from that place right there. hands together like you came to have church this morning. How many people came to have church on this morning? Put your hands together for Jesus. Now I'm going to give y'all one more chance in here because y'all didn't do it right. Y'all know in the Impact Church, we move out of our seats, we go find somebody, we shake them by the hand, we give them a fist bump, but I want everybody to move out from where you are, move out from who you came with, and go find somebody and welcome them to the Impact Church. What?
in here. Come on, somebody act like you came to have church today. You didn't act like you come to have church today. Put those hands together. <laughs> Tell somebody. your hand and give God praise all over this building. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, give God praise. Why don't you? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are there any glad people in the house on today? Let me hear you. How about your boy? Woo, I just go to my feet to welcome everybody to the 10 a.m. service here at the Impact Church. I just want to acknowledge all of my first-time visitors. Where are you? Just wave at me. I know you acknowledge you already. Look at all my first-time visitors. Wave at me. Come on. Come on, church. Let's give them a real good Impact Church welcome. Amen? Praise God. Listen, and while we're welcoming them, why don't we praise God for all of our internet audience that are watching us, amen, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. Praise God. Church, help me welcome all of them, y'all. Help me welcome all of them this morning. Hey! <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're so glad to be in God's house on this morning. Listen, listen, I heard you ladies had a fantastic time on the Zoom call with First Lady last Thursday. Where are all my ladies at in the house? Yeah, I heard y'all shut the place down. Amen. It was ladies only, so I couldn't sneak in there, but I wanted to. Amen? Amen. Amen. For those of you who missed it, you're going to get another opportunity on this Thursday at 7 p.m. The link is going to go out to you so that you can get involved. Let me also underscore for my men. Listen, I told y'all, y'all get them ladies on that phone. They will take over. Amen. Huh? So all my men, you know we're meeting on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock for our Bible class. Amen? So tell a brother. Look at what I say. Tell a brother. I got to say it like that. Tell a brother. Amen. Tell him, get online. Get in this word. Amen. Because God has got a blessing for you. Help me welcome Pastor Jonathan Ford to our stage this morning. Leading us into the presence of the Lord and this wonderful praise team. And give God praise for our band. Yeah. All these instruments, all these gifts. Amen. That lead us into the presence of the Lord. But listen, it's offering time in the sanctuary. Y'all can make better noise than that. I said it's offering time in the sanctuary. This is the portion of our service that we have set aside to worship the Lord through our giving, to give to the God who has first given to us. How many of you know if God had not blessed you to have resource, to have a job, to have the strength that you have, you wouldn't even have anything to give. But look how faithful God is, how he blessed you. And how many people know that it's not because you deserve it? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Somebody right now knows that I don't even deserve the blessing that I have, but God loved me so much. They look past my issues and past my challenges and past my failures. You know, I haven't always been as faithful as I should have been, but God is just so faithful. I'm so glad that even when we're not faithful, God is faithful. Somebody is foolish enough to think that God blesses you because you've been a good person. But I want somebody that God has blessed you and you know you don't deserve it. Just jump on your feet and say, God, I thank you. Yeah, I, I said jump on your feet and say, God, I thank you for the times I didn't do right and the times I didn't act right and the times I didn't cross my T's and dot my I's, but you blessed me anyway. I want some people that are blessed anyhow to shout unto your God. Anyhow. Amen. So this is the portion of our service that we worship God through our giving. This is not an interruption of our worship. This is a continuation of our worship. This is an opportunity to say to God, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And the Bible says to honor the Lord. The word honor means respect the Lord. I respect God. I give to him because I respect him. I, I bow in my heart to him. And everything in my life has to submit to the fact that he is my provider, he is my Jehovah Jireh, and he is my God. Woo, all the blessed people say he's my God. So listen, I want every tither to stand to your feet all over the building. 
all over the building. Tithers are standing. Amen. We are tithers. We, we have committed 10% of our income to the work of the Lord. We have committed 10% of God's increase to us so that God's work can continue to go forward. We're not ashamed to be tithers. In fact, we understand the blessing of tithing. We know that if we give 10%, God said he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you would not have room enough to receive. How many people are ready for that kind of blessing? I mean the kind of blessing that overflows your cup and gets down in your saucer and down up off the table. Amen. You ain't ready for that kind of blessing. In fact, I got witnesses all around me right now who are already experiencing that kind of favor. Where are my witnesses at? I'm not going to testify. You testify. Let me hear you make some noise. I'm a witness. He'll give you a promotion. He'll give you a job. He'll keep you on the job. They'll be trying to fire you and they can't because the favor of the Lord is on you. You're not going to talk to me. Huh? There are more qualified people who should have your job right now, but they can't get it because God's giving it to you because the favor of the Lord is on me. You're not going to talk to me. How God will sometimes keep your little car running. He ain't got to always give me a new car. Just keep the car I got running. Come on, talk to me, somebody. That while I slept last night, other houses were vandalized, but God kept favor over my house. You're not going to talk to me. Come on, how many people praise God for the favor of God on your life? You didn't. So all my tithes, I want you to jump to your feet. And all, if this is not your week to tithe, I want you to jump to your feet also with a gift in your hand. Because I want to participate. I'm going to pray in a moment, but I want to join our faith together. But those who are watching us online, my impact partners, I want to challenge you in this moment. That's right. I'm going to challenge you in this moment. To don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get tired. Don't give out. Don't get worn out. Because everything you do for Christ will last. That the things that you're doing, the things that you're involved in, the seed that you're sowing, it does matter. Amen. The seed that you're sowing does make a difference. It makes a difference in the lives of people that you may not even know. The fact that our doors are open. The fact that we got lights on. The fact that we got air on. Bless God. The fact that somebody's able to come in seeking Jesus and they don't come to a locked door. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Somebody stumbled in here because they heard that they, we were serving bread over here. That we were serving the word of God over here. They stumbled in here. They came with somebody. And it is a blessing that because of you, those doors were open. So that God can minister and God can serve. Oh, y'all ought to be glad about that. that. That's God using your gifts. That's your tithes at work. Don't let nobody mess you up and think, oh, they just run out the back door with a bag of money. The devil is a lie. You can look all around you and see what God is doing. This staff we have here, these lights that are on, amen, decorating that park a lot, getting that lobby together. You ought to praise God. This is your tithes at work. Amen? Amen. So all my tithers and all my gift givers, stand to your feet. Just jump up on your feet like popcorn and lift those gifts up before the Lord. In fact, lift them up over your head like the Old Testament priests did. They would wave their offering before God. I want you to lift your offering over your head today because I'm saying to God that everything up in my house, I'm covering everything up under me. My kids, my grandkids, everybody connected to me. Amen. I'm praising God for everything. I'm putting it up under right now. If you're giving on your Givelify app, that is the simplest way to give. Amen. Just look for the Impact Church of Nashville and find the one that has the Impact Church logo. And when you see my face on it, you'll know you're at the right church. Amen. If you're watching online, there's a text to give option on the screen below. You can jump over to our website and just hit the donate button and you can give. We don't care how you do it. You can give by check. You can give by cash. You can send it by a pigeon. <laughs> we'll receive it. We don't care how you do it. We just ask you to do it one way. What's that? A cheerful that's the only requirement. A cheerful giver. A hilarious giver. <laughs> I'm laughing about it. I'm laughing because whatever the devil tried to do, it didn't work. Come on, somebody. Come on, let's pray. Father, I praise you for these gifts, for these talents that are in the house, God, for these that are giving their gifts to you. We lift them up to you, Lord, by faith. If there's ever a time, Lord, where we need to tap into our faith, it is now. We can't depend on the government. We can't depend on our jobs. We can't depend on our friends. Our hope is on you. We look to you. You are our Jehovah Jireh. So we lift our gifts to you today, Lord, because you are the only one who can open up a door, who can make a way. I pray, Lord, that somebody sows a seed today that, Lord, you would open up doors for them. 
that you would give promotions to them, that you would give opportunities to them, that things that have been eluding them and staying out of their hands, Lord, that you would somehow find their way into their hands right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every devil, every demon that will try to frustrate my blessing. Loose that blessing, devil. Loose that devil. Loose that blessing right now. And I receive the blessing of God on my life in Jesus' name. Everybody agree with that prayer. Give God your best praise right here. Come on, give God your best praise. Somebody say I'm blessed. Come on, let's sow together. Deacon, would you serve the people of God? Come on. Everybody say blessed. your hands and give God praise while you take your seats. Amen. I want to acknowledge all of my members that are watching online, our internet supporters. Amen. I want to just shout out a few names to them. Amen. Angela Edwards. Amen. Audie, Loving it. Audie London. Praise God, man. Amen. Lala Buchanan, Georgia Patterson, Melissa Moore, Brother John Anderson, Victoria. Amen. I want to praise God for all of you that are watching. I want to go one step further and say to you, listen, take a moment and check in. If you're here today and you got your social media, open your app, amen, your Instagram, amen, or your Facebook, just check in. Let them know where you are. In fact, pull out your phone right now. Let's take a selfie. Tell them at the Impact Church of Nashville, you picked the wrong Sunday to be missing. Yeah, tell them just like that. You picked the wrong Sunday to be sitting home drinking coffee and eating donut. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in this church. They tell my child, you missed it. Yeah, you better get out here and stop playing. Stop playing with me. Amen. Take a moment. Take a selfie. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Check in wherever you are. And listen, I, I'm so excited about this word that God has given me to share with you on this morning. And while you're sharing that with your friends and sharing it with your neighbors and all that, taking selfies, I want you to pay attention to the screens on the left and the right of the stage so that you will see all the great things that God is doing here at the Impact Church. Take a look at this. Hey, Impact Church family, here's what's happening this month at our church. Many of you answer the call to get involved and serve as a volunteer, and we couldn't do what we do without you. However, we still need more volunteers. Get plugged in in the following areas. The Media Ministry, Facility and Building Maintenance, Guest Services Desk, and CDL Licensed Bus Drivers. For more information about these volunteer opportunities, visit the Guest Services Desk in the lobby. Parents, Kid Zone is back in session. Don't let your child miss out on learning about God in an exciting and fun curriculum, Celebrate Wonder. Kid Zone will unlock and engage your child's natural sense of curiosity by teaching them about God's love. Bring your child between the ages of 2 through 12 to Kid Zone to experience all that's going on. Please remember the following. Check-in is at 9.45 a.m. and pickup is immediately after service. Contact Daphne Brown, Director of Youth Services at 615-226-9927 for more information. Thank you. 
Do you have your Impact merchandise yet? What are you waiting for? Stop by and check out the Impact kiosk to get t-shirts, swag bags, jewelry, books, and more. We'll see you before and after service. Calling all men. Pastor Faison wants to pour into your life. Join the Man Up Men's Ministry call on Zoom every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Take time to allow God to move through fellowship, conversation, and accountability. You won't regret it. Remember, Sunday services are happening every week at 10 a.m. in person and online. For our in-person worship, we are following CDC guidelines to ensure the safety and comfort of you and your family. The following safety measures are still in place. Hand sanitizing stations are available throughout the facility. Social distancing continues to be implemented, and restrooms and the sanctuary are sanitized often and weekly. And masks must be worn at all times. And as always, you can continue worshiping with us online. Be sure to tune in on Facebook at the Impact Church of Nashville or on YouTube at the Impact Church. Thank you for those who have given and continue to give to the support of the church. There are four ways to give. In person at 705 Rivergate Parkway, Goodlitzville, Tennessee, 37072. Or anytime, anywhere, the following ways. The Givelify app. Be sure to choose the Impact Church of Nashville icon and look for the picture of Pastor Faison. Online at impactchurchnashville.org. Or you can text to give at 615-802-6573. If this is your first time tuning in, whether in person or online, we hope to see you again. Our worship service times are 10 a.m. Daylight Savings Time every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights for our virtual Bible study. That's this month at the Impact Church. Be sure to follow our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram pages for more inspiration and information. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn very quickly to the book of Genesis, chapter 28, beginning at verse 10. If you quickly stand to your feet and turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 28. And when you find that book of Genesis, chapter 28, would you stand to your feet out of respect for God's word? Amen. The book of Genesis is easy to find. It's the first book. First book of the Bible. <laughs> Genesis, chapter 28. Y'all all right out there? I don't know if they can hear me or not. Y'all all right out there? Y'all know y'all got to talk back to me. Y'all all right out there? All right. Genesis chapter 28, beginning at verse 10. If you're ready for the word of God, say, yeah, y'all. Yeah. All right. Just before I get into the word of God, I want to say to all of our visitors who are here today, uh, I'd like to just take a moment in fellowship with you after service today, if you don't mind, if you would come back to my fellowship, uh, fellowship room, my fellowship hall, right after church, we'll have somebody lead you back. I just want to take a moment to look at you, love on you, ask you where you're from and what brought you here and that sort of thing. Just fellowship for a few minutes, okay? So if you have time, if you have a moment, just come on back in the fellowship hall and just fellowship with us for a few minutes after church. Amen? Not right now, so don't be trying to walk out. After church, Amen? Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. I'm going to be reading out an NIV translation of the Bible. Where it reads, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. And when he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. And taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. You're going to take over. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Oh my God. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. 
and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And early in the next morning, Jacob took the stone that he had placed his head upon, and he set up a pillar and poured oil on top of it, and he called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, listen at this, saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, Everything you give me, I will give you a tenth. I'm going to give you your cut, God. Yeah, you bless me, I'm going to give you your cut. Listen, I want to drop back. I want to drop back just a few verses. And I want to drop back to verse 16, 15. 17. Where he says, how awesome. 16. When Jacob woke from his sleep, from his sleep, he thought, surely, there it is, I had to find it. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not even aware of it. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And I want to use a simple subject this morning, access point. That's my subject, access point. Father, bless your word on this morning as we go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. In the wildest world, the, the access point is the focal point of all communication within your house. It is the device that is used to communicate to and from and receive information. It is vitally important. It becomes the, the gateway the point that communication is given and received. You cannot overlook that. You cannot take for granted that device because without it, it would interrupt your ability to communicate things that are needing to go out and things that are needing to be brought in. Can't take it for granted, your access point. I want to say this very quickly. People of God, you have to be careful to never take the presence of God in our lives for granted. The worst thing you can do to anybody is to take them for granted. You know what I mean, taking, for granted. taking somebody for granted simply means you used to welcome them, appreciate them, and celebrate their presence in your life. But now you have become disinterested, distracted, and in some places, even become disgruntled, where when they come around, you get an attitude. You can tell they're just starting to take that person for granted. It's not that you have to do cartwheels and, and backflips whenever that person comes in, but it's simple things like acknowledging their presence, making eye contact. I see you. And it's a weird thing, especially with married couples, that the person that you used to couldn't stay away from sent love notes to blue kisses at, chased them around all the time, couldn't wait to see him. To get to a place where you suddenly take that person for granted is a terrible thing. And the moment you start taking people for granted where you treat them like they don't matter, the moment they walk in the house, I'm giving you a secret, ladies and gentlemen, if you marry people, the moment they walk in the house and you don't celebrate them, you don't acknowledge them. You don't even make eye contact with them. You don't even acknowledge their presence. It signals the beginning of the end of the relationship. Where you have taken me for granted, where you assume that I'm just going to be there, where you treat me like furniture, where you're not even interested in the fact that I'm even here. It, it, it's a bad thing to take anybody for granted. Yeah, because everybody wants to go where they're celebrated and not just tolerated. Nobody wants to come into a house married to a spouse 
Come into the presence of your kids and they treat you like furniture, like, like you don't matter. Here you are, you're paying the bills and everything, <laughs> keeping the lights on. You walk in, I'm home, and they treat you like they are disinterested, disgusted. Like, why did you even show up here? It's a bad thing to treat anybody for granted, but it's really a bad thing to treat God, to take God for granted. When it comes to God, I find that there are, there, there are two camps of people that exist in church. One of it is people who have never experienced God uh, in a significant way. And so when they come into a service like the ones that we have here, when they come into a service and they come into the presence of God and they come into the worship, they're, they're almost uh, confused by the whole experience. And they're almost like the Israelites in the wilderness who came out and they were used to eating uh, leeks and onions. But then God gave them manna and they said, what, wh what is it? That's what manna means. Manna means what is it? God gave him this strange thing. I don't even know how to cook it. I don't know how to serve it. I don't know how to prepare it. I don't even know what you're supposed to do with this. What is this? It's manna. And so some people don't receive from God because they walk into a new experience. And rather than be open and take it in and, 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 and push into that experience, they back up and say, what is it? Yeah, I, I don't understand it. I wasn't brought up in it. I haven't been around this. Nobody in my family is involved in this. And so I look at it strangely. Rather than pressing in and receiving it, I stand away from it because I'm wondering what it is. That, that's one extreme because they've, they've never tasted of the goodness of God. If, if they'd ever tasted of the goodness of God, if they just, just take a taste. Oh, the Bible said, oh, taste and see. Yeah, that sometimes you don't have to argue with people. Just, some, just invite them to church and say, oh, taste and see. Just come and check it out. That's all you got. Check it out for yourself. But sometimes they're resistant. That's one group of people. Then there's another group of people who I'm going to talk about who have been around the presence of God, who have been in churches, who have been in ministries, who have been around church. And those people have grown to a place unfortunately, where they're unimpressed or moved by the presence of God. You've gotten so used to him that it doesn't even impress you anymore. Where he comes in the room and you're not even moved because I've heard that before. I've seen that before. I've heard some people when they come to church and they hear a preacher take the text, they've already clocked out because they said, I've heard that text before. I've heard that sermon before. I've heard that song sung before. I've heard great preachers. I've heard great singers. I've heard great musicians. I've seen wonderful people. And so when I come in, I'm not even impressed by the presence of God on this person because I'm used to this. And you start taking him for granted, like furniture, where you can walk right past it, where you can be in an anointed service. So you treat God with some sort of mild curiosity, as opposed to being in awe, as opposed to drawing on his presence, as opposed to being excited by the fact that the king of glory has stopped by to see you, as, as opposed to being impressed by the fact that the God of the universe who controls everything will take a moment to stop by and see about little old you, instead of being impressed by the fact that the king of heaven, the king of everything, the Lord of glory, the God of everything, the sovereign Yahweh will come down and sit with you instead of being impressed like with him you're disinterested I can tell by the way you worship that you don't take that you take for granted his presence I can tell by the fact that the smoky presence of God comes in the room and you're playing on your Facebook or having to run out to the bathroom or find a piece of candy in your purse or looking around like you're in some strange place and you have not acknowledged the fact that the Yahweh, the King of glory, the Jehovah God has stepped down into our midst and it demands that you acknowledge his presence. Somebody take a moment and acknowledge the fact that the Lord is in this place. 
Oh, you're not acknowledging the Lord is in this place. If your favorite singer came in, you'd be all on your head. If the president came in, you'd be standing to your feet. But God said, I'm the Yahweh, the God of heaven, the sovereign Lord. And I have come to visit your church. And I need somebody who acknowledges the fact that I've come in this room. How dare you track just interested when I am the God who touched your body, who blessed your kids, who woke you up this morning, who touched your mind, who healed you. Joe, you better give God some kind of praise in here. For 30 seconds, somebody acknowledge that the Lord is in this place. Come on, you can do way better than that. The God that worked you up this morning, the God that touched your body, you wouldn't even be able to walk in here if God hadn't blessed you with health and strength. I'm going to give you 30 seconds one more time to acknowledge that the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth... treat God with some mild curiosity. He's the Lord of glory. Part of the problem is our misunderstanding of what God has come here to do. That whenever God shows up like he does in our services, he doesn't just come to excite you. He doesn't just come to entertain you. But God showed up because he wants to change you. That the goal of his visitation is to impact you in such a way that your life will never, ever be the same. God said, I didn't, come, I didn't just come by for a casual visit. I came to get something done. I came to move some stuff. I came to change some things. I came to make sure that if you came into my presence, that you wouldn't go back out the same way you came. You may have came with burdens, but you're going to drop them in my presence today. You may have came worried today, but you're going to leave here with peace. You may have came here today frustrated and angry, but you're going to leave with joy because I came here to meet you on purpose. This ain't no accident. I came to do something in your life. Now, here's my problem. Here's my problem. That a lot of people in church have been in church for years, and they've never really had, my God, an encounter with God. I didn't say they didn't have an encounter with church. They haven't had an encounter with God. My concern is that we have made church, follow me now, we have made church out of an idol. Instead of being impressed with the Lord of the work, we're more impressed with the work of the Lord. I, I, I said this to my staff this morning, and I'm going to say it to you. I don't want this church to be the kind of people who are so busy about the work of God, about preaching, about singing, about serving, about pushing buttons, about pushing knobs, that you never acknowledge his presence. That we are so caught up in doing for him that we don't spend time with him. Because by doing so, we have made church an idol. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We have made church so much an idol that we're almost like the, like the children of Israel did in the, in the Old Testament when they made the golden calf. Uh, Jonathan, when they made the golden calf, the Bible says that they ate and they drank and they rose up to play. <laughs> yeah, they ate and drank and rose up to play. They came in, they enjoyed and went right back to doing all the same stuff they were doing before. Never changing, as opposed to, in contrast to that, as a few chapters back, you read where the elders were sitting at the mountain of God, and God invited them to a feast, and they saw a vision of God, and they ate and they drank in his presence, but you don't read where they got up to play. Because they were there in awe, in respect. They understood that the Lord of heaven was here, and they didn't just walk away from his presence Acting like I'm going back to do what I'm going to do. But whenever you begin to do idol worship, which is what we do in church, we make church out of an idol that we go back to doing the same things we did before we came in church because you were here for entertainment and not for edification. Oh, I don't get no amens today. You came to see if you can get your shout in. And so you worship the church experience. You worship the church structure. You worship, you bow at the altar of your systems and your processes, never acknowledging the God that you serve. Never get so busy giving out the water that you don't drink the water yourself. 
That's what I shared with my staff this morning. Don't get so busy carrying water that you don't drink the water yourself. You're like a doctor that dispenses medicine, but you don't take the medicine yourself. You're like somebody who cooks for everybody else, but you don't eat your own cooking. You don't ever want to get so busy, Martha, that you're so busy working for the Lord that you don't spend time worshiping the Lord. How easy it is for us to be thinking about what I got to do. I got to push a button. I got to turn on a light. I got to sing a song. I got to do whatever it is I got to do. And we're so busy trying to do it that we walk right past the one that we're supposed to be doing it for. Because you don't understand that when God showed up here, he didn't just want your service. He wanted you. He wanted to change your life. My prayer is, God, don't just touch me. Don't just come by. Don't just come by and see about me, but change me. Make me over. Don't let me be somebody who come to church frustrated and leave out the same way I came. Don't let me be somebody who came to church out of duty, carrying all my burdens and issues and problems and go right back out the same. Some of you have been baptized in water, but you went down as a dry devil and you came up a wet devil because you don't understand that the whole purpose of being here is to have an encounter with God. Is there anybody in here this morning that came to have an encounter with God? Not an encounter with the pastor, not an encounter with the praise leader, not an encounter with the band, not an encounter with the church mother. I came because I wanted to have an encounter with God. If that's you, lift your hands and give God a praise right here and say, Lord, I came to find you. Change me. Change me. That's what I came for. I know, Lord, that you showed up and you were heavy in this place because you wanted to change me. How terrible it is that we've gotten so comfortable with the anointing that we don't even acknowledge the fact that he has touched us. That we can walk out of an anointed service and go back to foolishness, back to drama, back to craziness, Back to acting a fool. Back to doing all the things you were doing before. And so church for you is just an interruption of your life. Yeah, it's just, it's Sunday. Let me put aside my issues, my craziness, my drama. And so I can be this saint for a few minutes. And I'll pick it up when I get done with church. God said that can't be. That I came to change. I came to address issues. I came to address Challenges. I came to give you such a vision of me that you will understand my person, my purpose, and my power in your life. If you're walking out of God's presence and you're not impressed with his person or his purpose or his power in your life, then I adjure you to drop everything that you are thinking about and begin to dump your issues out and your problems out and whatever's on your mind. As the old song used to say, forget about yourself to concentrate on him and worship him. Do I have any worshipers in the house? I said, do I have any worshipers in the house? All the worshipers holler at your boy. All the worshipers holler at your boy. I didn't come to see what the praise leader was going to do. I didn't come to see what the pastor was going to wear. I didn't come to see who was going to show up at church today. But I came to bow in his presence and to acknowledge him. Somebody give God enough praise in here that this place gets smoky with the presence of God. Oh, you ain't going to ring them up this morning. God said, I'm sitting right in your midst. And you sit there as if you're at a movie theater. Somebody, all the worshipers take over the room right now. Oh, I got to stay on that for a minute because that's what we're missing. We're missing people who have a real encounter with God. When you leave church, you talk about, wow, didn't they sing? And look at so-and-so's shoes. And didn't so-and-so have on a cute dress? But God is waiting for us to leave his presence, talking about the presence of God was heavy here today. God touched my life. He straightened out an issue. He addressed something in my life. I'm so glad that Jesus was here today. I'm glad that Jesus was here today. 
the deacons may not be here today the mothers may not be here today my best friend may not be here today my kids may not be here today but as long as Jesus is here today everybody else can be gone and this be a private worship census between me and my God somebody give God a private dance right here this is private this is personal this is between me and my God that's my prayer for this church that you would have an encounter with God that you would have such an experience with God that you'll never be the same again. That there's no way you can walk out of his presence and not be impacted. Oh, I remember the day, Sister Carmen, when we would leave church talking about how good the word was and how strong God's presence was. We didn't leave talking about foolishness. We didn't leave talking about gossip. We didn't leave talking about so-and-so didn't come. We didn't leave talking about what somebody had on. We left and we were so drunk in the spirit that we could hardly drive home. Is there anybody that wants God's presence so strong on you. Michael, when we got back home to our friends, we couldn't wait to tell them what happened in church today. We couldn't wait to tell them how strong his presence was. We couldn't wait, but now we're taking God for granted. For granted. For granted. We don't even pay attention that he's in the room. When healing breaks out, we don't even acknowledge it. When God regulates somebody's mind, we don't even pay no attention to it. When somebody gets saved, we don't even celebrate it because now we're taking him for granted that he is our access point. So Jacob in our text is a man whose life is about to be changed by an encounter with God. A vision. He's a man on the run. He's a man on the run, Michael, because he'd done some dirt. <laughs> He's a man on the run. His name is Jacob. His name suggests that he is somebody. His name means supplanter. He's a con artist. He's slick. He's somebody who done some dirt. He's a manipulator. <laughs> a trickster, a con man. And up to this point, he was living up to his name. Is there anybody who's ever had to live up to your name? Let me go here. That some of the stuff they said about you wasn't a lie, but it was true? That, that everything they said about you wasn't somebody making up stories on you. There is evidence. There is proof. You have done that. You're doing that. And you continue to operate in that. And they gave you that name because that's how you act. And he was a con order and a slickster. And he was on run, on the run from this life. Let me say this real quick. Everybody in this room has a past. Let me look at you. I said everybody in this room has got a past. Everybody in this room has got something that you would not want aired. And I know we're looking all cute, and I know we're looking all dressed up, and I know we're looking all pretty, and maybe that's why it's so difficult for sinners to get saved, because when they encounter real Christians, they don't know that they are people who are just as difficult, had, had challenges just like you. Yeah. We act like we got it all together, Jonathan, like we don't have struggles, we don't have issues, that you weren't just as bad as they were, that you did the same things that they did, amen. And I believe that a lot of people would get saved if the saints would just be real. So here he was, a man on the run, and he was weary from his journey. He took a nap, and when he took a nap, he slept. He had a dream. He had a vision that came from God. I like that because even though he was a man of dirt, he had a date with destiny. How many are glad that with your dirt, that God still had a destiny for you? Where are my real Christians at that can acknowledge I had some dirt? Maybe on this side. Where are my real Christians at on this side that can acknowledge I had some dirt? But God still had a destiny for me. That God still had a purpose for me. And that my destiny is going to supersede my dirt. <laughs> that what God has in front of you is going to be bigger than what has been behind you. That even though you might have started out being one way, after you have an encounter with me, you're going to be going in a whole different direction. Is there anybody who's so glad that God didn't wait for you to get fixed up? 
He didn't wait for you to get dressed up. He didn't wait for you to get all smoothed out before he called you. But for some of us, God called us while we were still in the club. I ain't got no real church in here today. That some of us that God called you while you were still in the dirt. While you were still in your mess. While you was on your way to do your dirt. And God called you and said, I got a plan for you. Is there anybody that's so glad that God, oh my God. Listen, let me tell you something. For those of you who are running from your past, the greatest way to get away from your history is to run to your destiny. That's the greatest way to get away from your history is to run toward your destiny. So in his dream, he had a dream that there was a connection point between heaven and earth. There was a ladder. And at the top of the ladder, he heard the voice of the Lord revealing his person and his power to him. And here's what happened. It shocked him so much, Michael. He woke up and he says, this is the house of God. And I didn't even know it. That's where I'm trying to walk to, Michael, and I'm trying to do this as carefully as I can. This is the house of God. This is the place where God resides, Angela, and I didn't even know it. That it is possible to be in a sacred place, a place of power in the presence of greatness and not even know it. That it's not where God just appeared. He was always there. You just didn't know it. He was always here. Power was always here. It's not where God picks particular Sundays to show up and say, well, we had good Sunday church last Sunday, and we didn't have this Sunday, and he came by on Easter, and he came on the 4th of July. It's not like that. It's just that the moment that you acknowledge his presence, you can have the same experience right now. That it is possible to be in the presence of somebody great and not even know it. That you could be looking at somebody and not even know what you're looking at. Until God reveals it. That's what revelation is. Revelation is not creating something. Revelation is just revealing something. It was always here. It was always available. It was always accessible. But you just didn't know it. And oh my God, to realize that it's possible to be in the presence that I could get healing and didn't even know it. That there's a glory resting over this building and you not even know it. And you walk in and out of it as if it's nothing and not realize that he's here and I just didn't know it. Interestingly, he called it a house. He said this is the house of God. But it bothered me, Carmen, because there was no house there. It was a desert. There was no house there. So the word house here doesn't mean a physical location. It means access point. That when I come to church, I come to church and I've gathered with the saints because it is an access point. It is a place that God has chosen to rest his glory. That when we all get together like I preached last week and we become living stones that we create this house, this dwelling place where God is. Now let, me, let me draw it on to some more. See, here's the issue. God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at all times. He's everywhere. So it's not, Jonathan, where God has to come to the church. He's already here. He was here before you got here. He was already here waiting on you. It's not like when we all got together and started singing and started clapping and playing instruments that God just suddenly showed up. He was already here. And in fact, let me go deeper. When it comes to your life, it's not where God just showed up in your life. He was in your past, your present, and your future. He's so omnipresent that he's standing back there in your past and he knows the things that you've gone through, been exposed to, that have happened to you. He says, I'm God there. I'm God in your present. I'm God when you're at your job, on your way to church. I was with you and I'm going to be God in your future. I am the God of heaven. I sit in all three places at the same time. I'm omnipresent. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. David said this, if I take the, the wings of the morning... And fly off, God, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, God, you're there. That there's no place I can go that you are not there. If I go to 705 Rivergate, 
he's there. If I go across town, he's there. If I go to my job, he's there. If I go downtown, he's there. That there's no place that I can go where I can get away from the presence of the Lord because God fills up everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. However, however, what he does do is he chooses to manifest himself. You see, he's everywhere all the time, but he chooses to manifest himself or reveal himself at a particular place, at a particular time, for a particular purpose. That even though God is everywhere at the the same time, all the time, he takes moments when he reveals himself to you. And in that moment that he reveals himself to you, he does it for a reason and for a purpose. The Hebrews used to call him Jehovah Shammah. The word Shammah means the Lord is there. That every once in a while, have you ever had this happen? Have you ever thought, I'm going to just go to church. It's going to be a regular service. I'm not expecting nothing to happen. And suddenly the Lord becomes Jehovah Shammah. Where the Lord is there. Have you ever been driving down the road, Sister Connie, Sister Connie, in your car, and suddenly the presence of God will come upon you, come out of nowhere, almost wreck your car because your hands came off the reel because he was Jehovah Shammah. That sometimes in the midst of trouble and tragedy and pain and frustration, that God will show up on your job and be Jehovah Shammah. What I need God is to be Lord Jehovah Shammah. I need God to show up in my situation. I need him to show up right now. Show up in my marriage. Show up in my money. Show up in my house. Show up on my job. Somebody lift your hands and say, Shammah. He's there. He's there. Anytime you acknowledge my presence, God says, I'm there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He was Jehovah Shammah. Oh, Sarita, it was my access point. At the moment that I begin to acknowledge his presence, that's why we encourage you to praise the Lord. It's not for our entertainment. It's not about gymnastics. It's not because we're getting tired of looking at people sitting like the Rock of Gibraltar. We're trying to get you to lift your hands and open your mouth because when you do, you create an access point. You create Jehovah Shammah and God shows up in the midst of us. Somebody take a moment right here. Let's test it. Lift your hands, open your mouth, begin to acknowledge the Lord right here. Just begin to give God praise right here. Come on, open your mouth and give him glory right here. And the more you give him glory, the more he'll show up. The more you give him praise, the more he'll show up. The more you call his name, the more he'll show up. The more you begin to acknowledge him, the more he'll show up. He'll show up saying, do you need healing? He'll show up saying, do you need deliverance? He'll show up saying, I'll be... Come on, you're not acknowledging me. I said, open your mouth right here and begin to show. God, show up. Be Jehovah Shammah. I know that you're here already, but reveal yourself. Reveal yourself as a healer. Reveal yourself as a doctor. Reveal yourself, my God. (laughs) When God shows up, something is supposed to happen here. You're at the right place at the right time. And you have to maximize and take advantage of the moment. You have to take advantage of the moment. Anybody remember in the Bible where there was a man who had an issue, had an infirmity for 38 years, and and he was laying at the pool of Bethesda, at Bethesda, and the Bible said that at a certain time, the angel would stir the water, and whoever jumped in first would get the healing. And he was there 38 years because he said nobody could get me in fast enough to get my healing. And Jesus healed this man outside the pool. outside of time it wasn't the right time but God was telling him I am Jehovah Shammah I am the access point you ain't got to go to a pool you ain't got to go to a place you ain't got to drive on an you ain't got to jump on an airplane and go to another state so you can get a touch from your favorite evangelist the moment you lift your, your hands and open your mouth God said I'll be Shammah right here come on lift your hands right here open your mouth because Shammah Y'all not going with me today. You, we, this ain't about getting me excited. I'm trying to get you to touch God at the access point. 
I'll show up and I will heal. I will show up and I will deliver. I will show up and I will bless your finances. I will show up and I will touch your mind. I will show up and I will fix your marriage. I will show up and I will ease your pain. I will show up and I will fix your situation. I will show up and I'll put money in your pocket. I will show up and I'll rebuke every devil and every demon. If you just open your mouth and just acknowledge that I show up God show up until our musicians can't hardly play show up until our preachers can't hardly preach show up until somebody jumps up on their feet and gives you praise because all of a sudden the Lord is here <laughs> to think to think that he's already here I just didn't know it he, I could I, you mean I could have been healed you mean I could have been delivered? You mean the moment I walked in while the worship was going on, I could have got a touch from God? You mean to tell me you could have delivered me any time in the service? Yes, because I'm Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. So what's supposed to happen? What's supposed to happen when we come to church? What's supposed to happen? Are we supposed to just say we got dressed and we came? Why does God take the time to reveal his person and his purpose and his power to you? I'm glad you asked. Write this down. God reveals himself to arrest your attention. I want to arrest your attention. I want to arrest your attention. You've got so many things going on in your life. So many things you come into church on your mind. So many things that cloud up and build up and overtake your life that you seldom take a moment to even give me your attention. So when I reveal myself to you, I reveal myself as the Lord of glory to get your attention. He had a vision of God sitting on the throne. And once you get a vision of God sitting on a throne and authority, everything else becomes unimportant. Suddenly everything else becomes inconsequential because God is in control. Here was, here was Jacob who put his head on a rock and slept. And God said, you'll know that you're in the right place when you can put your head on a hard place and, I will, and it'll turn to a place of worship. <laughs> anybody got some hard places going on I, I got a hard relationship going on I got a hard job going on I got hard people that I worship with I got hard things that I deal with and God said I will take the hard place and I will turn it into a place of worship that is actually in the hard places that I reveal myself the greatest you keep trying to find easy places, soft places. But when you put your head on a rock, on a tough place, God said, there, I'll reveal myself to you. There will become your place of worship. If you want to know where the glory of God is, show me where your hard place is. If you want to know where your God is, show me where your pain is. If you want to know where God is going to show up and reveal himself and become a place of worship, God says, I'm trying to get your attention. That's the place. You wouldn't worship like that if they weren't giving you a difficult time on your job. It was the hardness of the job that made you into a worshiper. It was rejection that made you into the worshiper that you are. It was being rejected that made you pull on God like you do. And is it possible that I allowed your life to be hard so that I could get your attention? As long as you had everything going for you, as long as everybody favored you, as long as everybody lent it to you and supported you, you felt like you didn't need me. So I let you hit your head on the rock sometime. I want to talk to some people in here who are sleeping on a rock right now. That God said the place that you're complaining about the worst is the place I'm going to reveal myself the greatest. Is there anybody right now who's having a hard time with anything? Where, where, where are my people at? I got to look under these lights. Where are my people in here that can acknowledge I'm having a hard time? 
I'm having a hard time with these kids. I'm having a hard time with this marriage. I'm having a hard time on this job. I feel like quitting, but I can't quit. I want to walk out. I want to tell somebody off. And God said, this is a place I'm going to reveal my glory. Lift your hands and say, God, reveal your glory to me. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. Maybe God set up the whole scenario so that he could reveal himself to you in a greater way. Maybe the reason why they left you is so that God could come in and comfort you. That you didn't really know that I could be a comforter until they left you. You're seeking validation from people instead of finding validation from me. Maybe this is why you're going from relationship to relationship. Because every time somebody breaks your heart, you run to the, to the arms of somebody else. And God said, I want you to run to my arms. So all the people you depended on, I pulled them back. I made it hard for you so that you would seek me. You wanted comfortable. You wanted easy. He wanted nice. Everything got to be smooth. But God said, I reveal myself in hard places. Number two, I reveal myself to you to adjust your thinking. Somebody right now is trying to desperately run from your past. There's some things that you have done, but there's some things that you have experienced that you're trying to run from. By the time Jacob had this vision of God, he went from a man who was trying to run from something to somebody who was running to something. That everybody here is trying to run from something. Trying to put some distance between who I was and who I'm trying to be. And you're running with everything in you. You're trying to shut doors and cut off people on Facebook and act like you don't know them and act like it never happened, but it did. Trying to pretend that it never happened to you, but it did. And you keep wondering why you keep falling back or being pulled back into those same feelings, those same emotions, those same issues. It's because you're trying to wrestle with your past. You're trying to outrun what you went through. But instead of being somebody who is running from something, he turned into somebody who was running to something. At first, he just wanted to get away from his brother who wanted to kill him. But then he became somebody who began to run after the destiny of God. Who began to run after what God has for you. Is there anybody in here that God has shown you your future? And he's telling you that I want you to be hard after your future. That I want you running with everything in you after what I have in front of you. That's why you need God to show up. To reveal your future to you. To tell you that where you are now is not where you're going to always be. Somebody can't get away from their situation right now because you think that where I am now is you're not going to always be broke. You're not going to always be lonely. You're not going to always be frustrated. You're not going to always be the tail that God is going to make you the head. You're not going to always be behind, but God's going to put you in front. You're not going to always be the one in need, but you're going to be the person that meets a need. I came to arrest your attention. I didn't come to make you dance. I came to get your, your attention. I came to adjust your thinking. I came to tell you to take your eyes off what you've been through and put your eyes on where you're going to. Come on, somebody. If, if, if you're wondering why you're not excited, it's because you're looking at where you've been and not where you're going. My God, if you could see what I see in your future, we wouldn't be able to have church right now. We'd be leaping and jumping and throwing chairs. If you saw what God was about to do in your life, is there anybody that wants to give God praise for what he's about to do? Slap the people and say, I'm excited about what he's about to do. I'm praising God for what he's about. You ain't excited in here. You ain't excited in here. I said, I'm praising God for what he's about to do. I'm praising God for what he's about to do. Is there anybody excited about what God's about to do? I know you see me right now, and you see I'm not going anywhere, and you're judging me by where I am. But is there anybody that wants to give God praise for what he's about to do? He's 
Can you see yourself healed? Can you see yourself married? Can you see yourself happy? Can you see yourself living better? Can you see yourself sleeping at night? Can you see yourself healed? You don't see it. Let me go on this high. Is there anybody over here? I've looked into your future and you look better than you do right now. Give him praise if you believe it. My problem is somebody's stuck. Somebody's stuck. They came this morning stuck. You're, you're like somebody who's trying to drive and your car's in neutral. <laughs> Get on my nerves. It don't bother me. Put it in reverse or put it in drive. Do something, but don't be in neutral. So you, so you got up, got dressed, came all the way to church, drove across town, found you a seat in the church, and sat there and put your head on neutral. And then you expect God to touch. <laughs> there you are sitting in neutral, staring at me like a TV screen. So I'm trying to get somebody out of neutral. I can't help where you've been. But I'm trying to get you out of neutral so you can put some gas behind where you're going. Is there anybody that's ready to put some gas behind where you're going? I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm not sure what's going to happen. But I believe that God has a greater future for me. If that's you, jump on your feet and give God your best praise, my future. My future. My future. My future. For somebody, your future is calling you. It's calling you out of your depression. It's calling you out of your situation. It's calling you out of your... Sarita, somebody asked me, do I ever hear my critics? And I told them, I do, but my future is hollering so loud. My future is hollering so loud that I can't even hear them. Is there anybody in here whose future is calling you so loud you can't hear your haters, you can't hear your critics, you can't hear people that's talking about you because my future is calling me? Somebody give God praise if you hear your future calling you. Come out of that depression. Your future is calling you. Come out of that foolishness. Your future is calling you. Come out of that sin. Your future is calling you. But Pastor, you don't know me. I'm an addict. I'm an alcoholic. I'm an adulterer. I'm a liar. I'm a cheat. Is that all you're going to be? Is that all you're going to do? You're going to put a period where God has put a comma? What else you going to be? I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going to be victorious. I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Somebody start walking around and say, I'm walking into my future right now. I don't see you walking. I'm walking into my future. You can't walk into your future sitting in neutral. I'm walking into it. I'm stepping high. I'm stepping into it. Let every demon know I'm coming. Let every devil know I'm coming. Let every hater know I'm coming. I'm coming for my stuff. I'm coming for my promise. I'm coming for my blessing. I'm coming for my victory. I'm coming for my breakthrough. Uh oh, somebody better make some room. Somebody make some room. Somebody make some room. Excuse me, I gotta walk this out. I gotta walk this out. I wish I could be a preacher that could stand in one spot, but I have to walk because I'm walking. You ain't walking in this. You ain't walking in this victory. The men are walking. The women are walking. The mothers are walking. The children are walking. Good God Almighty, there's something on me calling me to my future. You don't know me. I don't care if you're around since I was 15. You don't know me. You don't know nothing about me. I don't change. Oh, 
Oh, I see you walking now. I'm walking into my breakthrough. I'm walking into my blessing. I'm walking into my miracle. I'm walking into my victory. I'm walking into my... Yeah, they're walking around the church right now. They're walking around the walls of Jericho. Walls are coming down right now. Mountains are being moved right now. Doors are opening right now. Breakthrough is coming right now. The Lord is here. I wish you could see this church online. The whole church is walking. Somebody's getting out of neutral and they're walking into their blessing. Well, we don't do that at our church. We sit still in our church. Well, you're in the wrong church, baby. Because we're going to walk this out. Somebody walk, 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 walk. I wish you could see this church online. I wish you could see the mothers walking around this church. I wish you could see the sisters walking around this church. I wish you could see the men walking around this church. I'm walking out of defeat and I'm walking into victory. I'm walking out of poverty and I'm walking into prosperity. I'm walking out of loneliness and I'm walking into joy. Oh yeah, get your walk on today. Tell every devil, tell every demon, tell every critic, tell every warlock, tell every witch, you can't stop me. Don't play with this. This ain't for play play, baby. We serious about our walk. Walk it out. I dare you to walk it out. Uh-huh. I see somebody doing laps around this church. God said, every lap you take, you're getting closer to it. <laughs> somebody went from walking and they started running. Somebody went from walking and they started leaping. Good God Almighty! Good God Almighty! This ain't no quiet church. This ain't no stuck church. This ain't no dead church. This ain't no sit down church. This is a living church. I want that. That's it, baby. Walk it out. Walk it out. Go ahead. I'm stepping high. I'm stepping high. I'm stepping over devils. I'm stepping over demons. I'm stepping over hurdles. I'm stepping over complaining. I'm stepping over excuses. Walk, 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 walk. Y'all better stop playing with me. Walk. do this for me. Wave your hand like this. Why you got me doing this, Pastor? I'm waving goodbye to everything in my past. I'm waving goodbye to everything they said about me. I'm waving goodbye to everything I've been through. I'm waving goodbye to everything that try to keep me stuck. I'm waving goodbye to every lie and every devil and every... Get up off of me! My third point was God wants to alter your plans. For somebody, you thought that God was just trying to get you out and you were going to die in that place and God said, I'm going to alter your plans. Jacob, I'm going to send you right back to the place that you ran from. And But this time you come back, you're going to come back with a different name. I'm going to change your name. They're not going to recognize you. You were planning to die. I need you to go back because I need somebody to testify. Wait a minute.
minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God said to tell somebody who went out, God said, you're not going to come back empty. I don't know who that word is for, but God said to tell somebody, when you come back, you're not going to come back empty. You're going to come back with a testimony. You're going to come back with power. You're going to come back with glory. You're going to come back being loaded down. You're going to have so much stuff. I'm changing your plans. I'm changing your plans. God said, I'm changing your plans. You was planning to walk away and never have to come back. God said, I'm going to take you right back to the people that tried to kill you, that tried to talk about you, that said you wasn't going to make it. And I'm going to let you testify right in the face of your enemies, right in the face of your critics, right in the face of your ex who said you wasn't going to make it without them, right in the face of the people that said you were going to be a nobody. God said, I'm going to take you back and I'm going to have you loaded down. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. I need you to survive because I need somebody to go back and testify. Is there anybody in here that's going to testify? God brought me. Find three people and say, God brought me. I'm a testimony. God brought me. I'm here today because God brought me. I'm here today because God brought me. I'm here today because God brought me. He brought me. Tell somebody he brought me. Tell somebody he brought me. Devil thought he had me, but he brought me. I'm changing my plans right now. I was planning to die, but I'm getting up. I was planning to quit, but I'm not. Wait a minute, wait a minute. God said to tell somebody, wait a minute, God said to tell somebody, somebody in here, you was planning to give up, you was planning to commit suicide, you was planning to quit, you was planning to walk out, but God said, I'm going to change your plans right now. Everything you was planning to do, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I just changed the direction. I just changed the whole direction of the thing. I'm going to bring you out of it, that you're not going to die here. Look at somebody say, I'm not going to die right here. I'm not going to die right here. I'm not going to die right here. Clap those hands, hat. He changed me. He brought me. He brought me. He brought me. He brought me. He changed me. He changed me. He changed me. He changed me. Dead, dead. 
You can get healing in this atmosphere. You can get the Holy Ghost in this atmosphere. You can get a breakthrough in this atmosphere. Somebody throw your hands up and start doing like this. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. Pull it down. Pull it. Pull it down. Pull it. Pull it down. Pull it. Pull it down. How dare you? 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 Pull it down. before you praise me but I want you to praise me like you already got it you may not feel it yet but I already got it you may not have it in the bank yet but I already got it now I'm gonna tell you how the saints do this how the saints do when they come to church they gotta give God a real comfortable polite careful praise just in case he don't do it they don't want to get out there and look stupid but I want somebody that got some crazy faith to jump out in the aisle and begin to thank God like you already got your blessing. I'm going to give you the count of three. One. I'm going to give you to the count of three. Two. Now look, you have to make some room for this. You have to get away from somebody for this. Put on somebody and say, give me some room. Give me some room. Give me some room. I'm already going to tell you. I'm going to dance on your toes. I'm going to dance on your pocketbook. I'm going to get on your nerve. I'm going to get in your way. I'm going to holler. I'm going to make noise. Y'all ready? One, two, three, ten. I got it. I got it. Get your praise in. Get your dancing. 
Lift your hands, begin to worship right here. Lift your hand, begin to worship right here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is hovering over this place. I can feel him in the atmosphere. He has come to arrest you, to change you, to alter your plans. Somebody was about to give up. You're not going to give up right here. Somebody was just going to walk out of the church and say I had a good time. You're not going to be able to leave like that. Come on. You're going to take something with you. You're not going to be able to get off you. God said, I want to rush your attention. Lift your hands and worship right here. I need a vision of who God is. See, that's why we got to have church like this, Jonathan. I can't be in no dead church. I can't be in no dry church. I can't be in no church where folk just want to look at you because I need something from the Lord. How many people need something from the Lord? I, I got to have this kind of atmosphere because I need something from the Lord. Each other was shot now. Yeah, God, put your hand to this baby right here. Put your hands to this daughter right here. The hand of the Lord is upon her right now. Put your hands to this daughter right here. Put your hands right here. 
put your hands right here. The hand of the Lord be upon you, daughter. Somebody put your hands this way. Good God Almighty, put your hands this way. That's the Holy Ghost. If you're out there and you just sense that I just need to be at this altar, listen, the altar is open for you. It's open for anybody. I, I just need a touch from the Lord. I, 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 just need, I, I just need God to touch me in a significant way. It's open. It's open. It's open. If you're in here and you need church membership, you've been going from church to church, checking out churches, looking at churches. The Spirit of the Lord fell on this place because he wants you to know this is the church for you. This is the place for you. This is the place. I'm delivering your mail right here. If that's you, you can come up here too. Let him work. Let him work. Let him work. Let him work. Lift your hands where you are. Let him work. Let him work. Sis, right here in this dress. Can I pray for you? I don't want to embarrass you. Can I pray for you? Come here. Let me pray for you. Come here. You're right here. Can I pray for you too? Yes. Yeah, you're right there. I don't want to embarrass you. Right here. Right here. Yep. Yeah, in the black. Lift your hands to the Lord. You, you needed this atmosphere. For where God has taken you, you need this atmosphere. You need this kind of anointing in your life. And God said in the days that come, I'm going to reveal myself to you in ways you've never seen before. That I'm going to show you things that you've never seen before. That I'm going to show you things that will blow your mind. That I'm going to show you things that are going to prove to you without a doubt that I am the God who has touched you, who has called you. Stop running. Stop running. <laughs> Lift your hands as a sign of surrender. This is it for me. This is it for me. So I lay my hands on you, I'm calling ministry out of you. I'm calling gifts out of you. I'm calling gifts out of you. You hear me? I'm calling gifts out of you now. Oh! Yes, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Somebody point your hand this way. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm just trying to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. This is for you. This is for you. This is the moment. This is the moment. The Lord is in this place. Lift your hands to God. The Lord is in this place. 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 Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. God wants to do something in your life. Right here. Right here. This ain't no accident. You're supposed to be here. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The glory of the Lord is upon you. You can't escape this. You can't get away from this. You can't run from this. I don't care what you've seen. I don't care how many times you've been around. I don't care how many places you've been. God said, I got another level of glory to show you. His hand is upon you now. Do it now, God. Do it now, God. Come here, Angela. Come here, Angela. Come here, sis. Let me pray for you. Lift your hands to the Lord right here. Lift your hands to the Lord right here. Right here. Right here. There's so much down in you. There's so much down in you. The reason the enemy's fighting is so much is because he knows. He knows 
You, you are the Joseph in your family. You know who Joseph was? Joseph was the one God chose to be a blessing to his family. You're the Joseph in your family. And when God shakes you loose, he's going to shake everything connected to you loose. When God shakes you loose, everything connected to you is coming out of it. I'm going to lay my hands on you, but I'm not really laying my hands on you. It's the Holy Ghost laying his hands on you. And God's about to show his glory to you like you've never seen before. God, do it now. Walk. Out. Surrender to it. Surrender to it. Surrender to it. Surrender to it. Surrender. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Y'all better grab my coattail. I got to get out of here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Brother Sneed, come here. Come here, man. Come here, man. Good God Almighty. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I just want to touch and agree with you. I just want to touch and agree with you. Because God has plans for you. God has plans for you. He's been showing you stuff. He's been revealing stuff to you. You seeing stuff you shouldn't even see. All of a sudden you knowing stuff you shouldn't know. Because God wants to do something with it. Because God wants to use you in a significant way. And all the things the devil's been trying to do to be a deterrent, to block you, to stop you. God said, I'm moving it right now. I'm moving it right now. I'm moving out of the way right now. Everything he's put up in a roadblock. I'm moving it right now. Do it now, God, in Jesus' name. Ow! Somebody help me praise the Lord right here. Somebody help this brother praise the Lord right here. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. The Lord! Yeah. Yeah, the Lord is here. The hand of the Lord is upon you. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Stand to your feet. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here for real. I'm going to get out of here for real. I'm trying. I'm trying. Sis, can I pray for you? Do you mind? Yes. Come here, both of you. Yeah, you. Right there in the stripe. I want to pray for you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. God's glory is on you right here. Lift your hands to God right here. God's glory is on you. God's glory is on you. He's not showing it to you for nothing. You're not getting this touch for nothing. You're supposed to do something with this. You're supposed to do something with this. You're going to go back and change everything that you're around. There's an anointing on you so strong. It's so strong, you can't even shake it off when you leave church. It's so strong, you can't even shake it off when you get home. God sent this anointing upon you. It's going to shake nations. It's going to shake families. It's going to shake cities. So I lay my hands on you, God, shake. Shake. Shake now. Ow. Shake now. Shake now. Shake now. Shake it now. Shake it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. The Lord is here and I knew it not. The Lord is here and I knew it not. This is the house of God and I knew it not. Come here. I knew you was coming. Come here. Pray for you. Let me just 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 pray for you. Somebody help her. It's not by accident that you're here today. There's something that God wants to lay on you that He wants to take with you. you follow what I'm saying? There's something that God wants to lay on you, His anointing, His presence on you. That he wants you to take 
with you. God is real. The Holy Spirit is real. And his calling on your life is real. Lift your hands right here. I want to pray for you. Father, I lay hands on this daughter. Complete the work that you've begun. Everything she's been going through as God has brought her to this moment. Everything. The twists, the turns, the bends in the road, the disappointments, the rejection, the, the issues, the challenges, the people that walked away, the people that gave up. All of it was in your plan. The mishaps, the mistakes. God said, I'm going to use all of it. I lay my hands on you. There's a glory going to come upon you. Come here. There's a glory going to come upon you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, just open up and accept this. Just accept it. Just accept it. This is the beginning. 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 You ain't never going to be the same. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about the critics. This is your moment. This is your day. Come on. Open your mouth and praise him right here. Open your mouth and reach out to him right here. Open your mouth and reach out to him right here. Every time you reach out to him, he's going to touch you right back. Every time you reach up. Every time you reach up. Don't worry about these people. This is you and God. Don't worry about these people. This is just you and God. This is you and God. This is where God settles the issues. You're at the right place. You're at the altar. This is where God settles the issues. New beginnings for you. New beginnings for you. A new day for you. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? A new day for you. Somebody give God praise for her. I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to let you go. That's it, baby. Just like that. I surrender. Let the tears fall. I surrender. Let the tears fall. I surrender. I surrender. My hands are up. I surrender. Holy Ghost, take over. 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 This is a takeover service. This is a takeover service. The Holy Ghost is taking over this room. Take over. Okay, I'm going to let you go for real. The Holy Ghost is moving on this altar. Let him continue to work. If you're here and you need church membership, I want you to come on down to my left. Deacon, Deacon James is going to take you back to the back. Amen. For all of my visitors, I know I took you a little longer than I intended to. But if you want to visit with me for a few minutes, just come on back in our fellowship hall. Let's just fellowship for a few minutes, okay? Amen. Sister Rita, will you take us out? Yes, Lead us in a word of prayer. We'll lift God bless you. Unto the Lord and just begin to thank God for God's anointing and his power moving in this place, his miracle signs and wonders. Just know that God is taking over everything. Hallelujah. He's taking it over. God, we thank you, Father God, for taking over our situations, taking over our problems. Father God, by the time that we get home, it'll just change. It's already worked out. God, we believe you. God, we trust in you. Your favor, Father God. Your anointing, Father God. Your presence, Father God. Uh, take over us this week. Uh, take us through this week. Uh, take us over, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you be blessed. And may God's anointing and may God's power and may God's protection and may his angels watch over you this week and the weeks to come. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.